Good morning and welcome to the Tranquil Cottage Knits podcast. I'm your host, Michelle. You can find me on Ravelry as Tranquil Cottage, Instagram as Tranquil Cottage Knits. You can find the blog at www.tranquilcottageknits.weebly.com. And you can find the Facebook group just by searching Tranquil Cottage Knits in your Facebook search bar. So it is beautiful and sunny today and I am catching the morning rays so I am really just happy and soaking it up. However, it is still like only 50 degrees <laughs> so it's chilly but in the sun it just it feels amazing. So as always, I am hanging out in the backyard with my dogs. I've got Tucker and Callie who will probably dash through somewhere about here and make an appearance. Um, and I am accompanied by my ever faithful friend Coffee. So um, today I actually tried um, a new one. It's an 8040, or I'm sorry, it's called 80, 1850. 1850 from Folgers and I am really 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 a coffee snob um, but I had gotten this I don't know on a whim and it is delightful who'd have thought <laughs> normally I I'm just such a coffee snob I like you know local things by local roasters are um, we have Happy Creek coffee local and I adore them This is just really delightful. It, I don't know, it's making me happy. Anyway, so, ooh, I gotta stop hitting the table, that's not helpful. Um, so first up, I am wearing my Off to the Orchard shawl pattern. This is done in Malabrigo Rios, um, Azul Profundo and Natural. Uh, originally, I did the pattern in, um, rags fiber arts versa i always forget her brand name versa um and that is this colorway which is if i can flip it around here fall forward and little red monster now it's funny because i was on reddit and um talking about about the pattern and designing and things and I actually was asked my um, my design process and I said I explained this was 100% 100% because I fell in love with this yarn when I saw the skeins fall forward it it just looked so happy it was so it reminds me of an apple orchard. It reminds me of, like you can see the pink lady apples, um, golden delicious. You can see Granny Smith. You can see um, my favorite, Honey Crisp, um, John of Golds. All the colors from all the different apples. Oh, the dog started running laps. You can see all the different variations of apple in the colors of this shawl and it made me so happy and when um, Tony from Rags Fiber Arts when she does a variegated she also usually does a semi-solid to go with it and so as I was telling them on, on um, Reddit that the reason I ended up the, the reason I ended up deciding on this pattern this lace pattern I tried a bunch of them and was never happy with the look and then I realized it was because I wanted to carry the off to the orchard theme the apple theme I wanted to carry that through and so in my mind you have this meandering path that is relatively straight because orchard paths are straight but it's got the kind of rickrack um, design and then the staggered eyelets were meant to be apple trees. 
oh, they're probably going to be noisy for a minute. The morning races have started. Um, and so um, it was meant to, to be apple trees and the path to meander through the orchards. That's why I picked this lace pattern. Um, and it worked, it worked really, really well. Um, and of course there is the matching hat. I'm wearing this one with a Malabrigo. I did not end up with enough to do a pom-pom. Um, as a matter of fact, if you do Malabrigo like Rio, I suggest, I suggest that you do, um, section one and then cast on the brim of your hat before switching colors back on section three. That way you can make sure you have a, the brim of hat that's going to be your preferred length. So, um, I recommend that, but with the rags fiber, I had enough, sorry for the hat head, I had enough left over to do a really awesome pom-pom, and I was super excited about it because, ah, I was super excited about it because I suck at pom-poms. I suck at pom-poms. Horrible. But this one came out really, really great, and I was so thrilled with it. So, yeah, um, with Rags Fiber, I ended up with enough. I used both Little Red Monster and the rest of the Variegated to come up with this one, and it just, this pom-pom makes me happy. So, anyway, um, that's, that's what I'm wearing, and that's it. Um, patterns available on Ravelry all that shebang. Um, I did team up with Laura from Knitter's Magic. Um, to She was selling um, kits for the yarn, and if you purchase the yarn through either Rags Fiber, who's based in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, or Knitter's Magic, based here in Winchester, Virginia, uh, if you get the yarn through either of them, they have, um, I know Knitter's Magic has kits ready to go. Um, she has kits in Rio. She has kits in Rags Fiber. She has kits in, um, I believe, uh, Dos Tiras from Malabrigo. Um, and the great thing about Laura is she will do a yarn showcase for you. So you can um, contact her via FaceTime, via uh, let's see, house party, or just even texting back and forth. Um, her number is 540-550-4011. But you can contact back and forth, and she will show you pictures. Um, like, say you have an amazing skein of DK weight variegated, um, which this calls for DK weight, and you need to find something to match it. You can just message her and say, hey, I've got this. It's got um, the purple in there is kind of plummy. Can you find me DK weight something else? that has plummy um, colors in it. And she will help you totally match the yarn. And the great thing is, um, if no matter where you're in the country, she only charges actual shipping. So anyway, you can't go wrong. Um, I'm kind of racing the sun like around the house. <laughs> it keep, I've moved like three times trying to record this. Um, I guess somewhere in here I should say that this is episode 37. And I don't have a working title for this one yet, so we'll see. Um, I did record two videos before this and was not was not pleased with the result. I bought a new camera um, trying to up my up my uh, game here and I cannot for the life of me get that sucker to work right. so. Right now, I'm just sticking with my original camera. It It's not the greatest, but um, it's allowing me to kind of do what I need to do. And so, that's kind of where we are. Um, but I am I am looking to, like I said, up my game. Um, I feel like I'm half, half in the shade and half in the sun. So, it's like you can't see me or you see too much of me. I can't win. Um, this one won't be a long one anyway because, um, like I said, it is a bit chilly out here and, um, I don't know, it's Tuesday. It's the Tuesday before Thanksgiving. Um, and as crazy as 2020 has been, I am really looking at all the things that I'm thankful for this year. Because <sighs> things, honestly, things could be so much worse. 
When I used to be a customer service manager, I used to tell my staff all the time that really mean customers exist for a reason. Um, everybody you encounter, even people who are truly mean and nasty and make you feel horrible, those people exist in your life for a reason. And sometimes the reason is because somebody's going to enrich your life. And sometimes the reason is really just to remind you how you don't want to be, how you don't want to behave, how you don't want to be perceived, how you don't want to handle challenges that come up in your life. Um, and some people are just a shining example. And 2020 is kind of the same thing for me. Um, watching people be so completely hateful over really nonsensical things, um, watching people be really selfish, watching people, all of that just reminds me of who in my heart, who I am not and who I do not want to be. And so I'm really thankful for the lessons that 2020 has taught me about, um, just about kindness and openness and, um, doing the best you can despite odds, despite, you know, things not going your way, not aligning. Um, I see a lot of people who are really kind of spoiled and are throwing petty temper tantrums over very minor things and... I'm thankful for them because I'm thankful that that's not who I want to be and without having that experience in my life I wouldn't realize you know I wouldn't look out for that behavior and say hey you know what there's better ways to handle this I can dial it back so. anyway so that's how 2020 has got me thinking and how Thanksgiving has got me being thankful um not that I'm not always thinking and not always thankful but it's just um, a reminder to me to sit down and and have my brain actively chew on it you know actually digest what's going on there and um, the thought processes and the reason behind behavior so um, that has been a very um, I don't know I the words escaping me but that's been a very um it's just been a very thought-provoking time for me and so um i'm thankful to have my household together on thanksgiving and come what may head on as a team so <laughs> um next up what i am working on Let's see, I got my knitting in, I got my knitting in my happy bag. This, um, I don't know if you guys could see it in the sun. Oh my goodness, there you go. This bag is so happy. It is just pink and blue flowers on a lime, pink and blue and white flowers on a lime green background. And there's nothing I don't love about this. <laughs> Um, it is a Knitter's Magic exclusive project bag, and they are made by the amazing and wonderful Mary. Um, and so, she's delightful. She also does bowl cozies. Um, Laura just got a bunch of her bowl cozies in, and I cannot live without those things now. It, I never knew I needed them, never knew what they were. Got, got them, and... Now I'm like, how did I ever live without these? And so basically, they're just, they're fabric bowl-shaped cozies. And you put your bowl of food in them. Um, so that when you microwave your bowl of food or when you have a bowl of ice cream or whatever, it insulates your hands. Um, and my, uh, my, my family has just been like, oh, these are like the best thing ever. And now... Sometimes in the kitchen it gets hard to find one. So, <laughs> um, if you haven't checked them out, please um, check out the um, 
the website or the Facebook page for Knitter's Magic, she had a bunch of pictures of all of them up there. And if you want to see what she's got left, like I said, text her, call her, and she'll tell you what, what pattern she has. They're absolutely adorable, um, but mostly they do exactly what you think they're going to do. They insulate your hands from bowls that are too hot or too cold. Um, with my um, family member who has Alzheimer's, she really doesn't remember not to grab hot things. Um, so this is a way that I can really help protect her. And, and again, I absolutely love them and they have become an absolute no-brainer in my house. So, um, so next up, the yarn. <laughs> um, what should I go to first? Okay, let's go to Active Project first. So I am working on a, and I apologize for the bad crinkling, I am working on a cowl. It is my own pattern. Um, I should have it finished relatively soon. Um, but my colorways are slate. I don't know if you can... Uh, I've, I have lost all the sun. Slate, which is a deep gray. And marble, which is a pale gray. And so I am working on a winter cow that will be... Um, it's got color work and cables. And it is two color. And it is gorgeous. And the yarn is Beatrix by Juniper Moon Farms. And anybody who knows me knows I absolutely love me some Juniper Moon Farm. Um, as a matter of fact, um, I, I had received a skein, a stargazer from Juniper Moon Farms for my birthday. And I have to say, isn't this, uh, you guys can't even see it. <laughs> like there's, there is no sun left. Is there a tiny corner? Where are you? <laughs> oh, a little bit down there. You see, it is the most beautiful field gone to fodder color it, that's the juniper moon farms says it's solaris um i say it is wheat fields at the height of perfection it is it is fields of feed corn that have not um, have not yet been harvested. It is, it is, it's the color of the earth when the earth goes to bed for the winter, if that makes any sense. Um, but it is so gorgeous and so soft. Stargazer is, um, 70% llama and 30% silk. And if you have never knit with it, then you absolutely should because it is the glory. <laughs> So, um, that is, um, I guess you can consider it some, some enhancements, some stash enhancement, but I did want to show it off because it is so lovely and beautiful and that color just, farm girl at heart, that color just speaks to me. So, there is that. And then I have in my design book sketched out a three color shawl. And I am so excited because I actually chose my colors. Yay! <laughs> um, and again, I apologize for the bag crinkling. But, but dog fur sneaks into everything. So, um, my colorways are, uh, it's Purple Lamb in her sparkle fingering. Um, this is Eggplant. This is Epiphany and Lilac. Lilac and Eggplant are really kind of semi-solid. Um, and Epiphany is a variegated that has bits of both of those colors in it. And put together, the three are absolutely stunning. I mean, like, I when I put them together and then I was like not sure and I went out and put them in the sunlight looked at them I did a little happy dance um you know the little happy dance with the goofy clap that was me 
Um, so these are um, these are going to be the pattern that I've got sketched out, and um, I think that is I think December is going to be the cow release, and January is going to be the shawl release. So, as my mom used to say, I need to keep my ducks in a row. Um, but that's what's going on knit wise. Uh, let's see. Oh, I do have, I do have a question of the day for you guys. Um, for those of you who watch via um, either the website or for or just through YouTube, if you could put down in the comments, um, what do you think of? As winter colors my husband and I were going around and around for him Christmas colors um, like holiday colors holiday season for him it is um, like reds and greens and golds and that that's it he likes all white lights on a tree um, he loves a natural tree. So it's very much kind of the earthy greens and golds and, and reds. Oh, nothing there, buddy. Uh, it's like the earthy tones. Um, I have no problem with blue and silver. Um, I still love green, but blue and silver and even gold, um, I think are perfectly fine as holiday colors. My husband is just like, no, no, veto, veto, veto. <laughs> so that is that is my question of the day. What do you guys think of as holiday colors? Are you traditional in the reds and greens and golds? Do you like other colors? Do you have a silver and pink Christmas tree? What what do you guys think of as holiday colors? And um, do you and your spouse agree on them? <laughs> um, that so that's the color of the day. Please, um, on my YouTube video, you can hit the eye up in the corner, and um, it will take you down to the comments. I am just very curious to see what you guys think, or if. Um, if, I mean, if we're going to have an actual argument, my spouse and I rarely argue, if we're going to have an actual argument, I think holiday colors is probably a pretty good choice to go with. So, <laughs> um, thank you all for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this week's podcast. I am so sorry the sun has changed positions and um, it throws my colors off. I will insert a photo at the end of the made me dance glory of these three purple lambskins so that you can actually see what they look like um and uh, i think that's about it i will see you on friday uh, i since my family is all home i do plan to to get an opportunity to podcast then i hope the weather holds and i can kind of get out where it's quiet my house has a lot of noise um, so uh enjoy your week Please find something to be thankful for. Um, please also support your local yarn shops and your indie dyers and your indie designers. Love you all. Mwah. Thankful for you. Bye.